Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to show you how you can make your turbocharged car last as long as possible. Now to start with, I am not a fan of turbocharged cars. It rams more air into the engine, it's an expensive thing to make, and it will wear out faster, both the turbocharger itself and the engine itself, from the extra pressure. But that said, there are now millions of turbocharged cars out there because the manufacturers want to make smaller, cheaper engines that can still have some horsepower. You want power, get a V8 engine. But of course, the car manufacturers, they want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to be able to make a smaller, cheaper four-cylinder engine, but still have horsepower to make people happy while they're driving down the road. But at the expense of making people happy with a little engine with a turbocharger on it, gonna wear out faster. Of course, they kind of like that too, then they'll sell you another one. So you might already own a turbocharged car, or you're gonna end up buying one, because that's the kind of size you want and gas mileage you want. So today, I'm gonna give you tips, real tips, to show you how to make that turbocharged car last as long as possible. Now, it won't last as long as this non-turbo matrix. These will go four or 500,000 miles or more. It won't last that long, but you want to make it last as long as possible. So here we go. Number one, use the correct weight oil and change it every 5,000 miles. Right here you can see it says 5W30. Most modern vehicles use lightweight oil like a 0W20 or even lower. Stick to that. The turbochargers have to be lubricated correctly. Realize, turbochargers take the gas from your exhaust system, spin a turbine, then the other side is a turbine that compresses air and throws it in the engine. And they will spin anywhere from 80,000 RPMs upwards to 300,000 RPMs in some high-end cars. Guess what both lubricates and cools the turbocharger? The same engine oil that you use in your engine to lubricate and cool down your engine. If you keep dirty oil in, that bell's gonna toll for you because it's gonna wear out the engine, but it's also gonna wear out the turbocharger. It spins so fast. Any dirt is going to ruin it. Now the next thing you can do to make your turbocharged car last longer, you're probably not gonna like, but this is what we always used to do with turbos. If you're driving your turbo car real hard, fast RPMs, right? When you came home, you would sit in the car for five minutes with it idling in park. And here's the reason why. If you drive a car real hard and it's all hot, and then you just shut it off, what happens is this. You get what's called a heat soak. You shut the car off, the cooling system is no longer cooling. The oil is no longer flowing through the turbocharger. So it gets what's called a heat soak. The oil that's in your turbocharger can actually do what's called cook. And it can cook and it can break down into sludge, which of course is going to ruin the turbocharger. Like I said, you're not gonna like this. <laughs> drive hard, then let it idle for five minutes before you shut it off, right? Most people aren't gonna do that. If you want it to last the longest, that's what you should do. There's an old horse saying, ridden hard and put up wet. And what it means is, you ride the horse real hard and they get all sweaty, right? Well, when you do that with a horse, then you're supposed to take the saddle off, brush it a little, walk it around so the horse can cool down and get the sweat off of him and then put him in the barn, right? Well, in the case of a turbocharge, if you ride it hard and put it up wet and don't let it cool down a little bit, it will cause problems in the long run. Now everybody's in a hurry these days, we're probably not gonna do that. So, halfway measure, if you are driving your turbocharged car like a maniac, when you know you're five minutes away from home, slow down. <laughs> Start driving at lower speeds. Then there'll be less heat built up in the engine. A little thing like that can make them last a whole bunch longer. They build up too much heat. That's why all the modern cars that are turbocharged, the decent ones at least, have what are called intercoolers. The compressor's compressing air. You know what happens when you compress air? It gets hot. Use a bicycle pump, grab the pump. You see it gets hot as you pump it, right? Well, they have an intercooler that cools the air before it gets into the engine. Check your intercooler. It's a little radiator, just like the radiator in a car, but it's a radiator for the turbocharging system. Check it. Make sure it's clear. Make sure it isn't covered with bugs or leaves, or you suck up plastic bags in the grocery store and it's blocking it up, that's going to destroy a turbocharged system too. So make sure that's all clear and clean and you don't have a problem. Plus, since they're revving higher, the turbine's spinning, you get a little bit more vibration in a turbocharger under the hood. So you want to check the air ducts every once in a while. 
make sure they're tight and they're not sucking air and especially if you got an intercooler they got long tubes check all those long tubes on the intercooler and check all the long tubes that go from the turbo back into the engine intake you don't want them to get loose so you don't want them to be cracked look for little cracks and stuff you'll end up having problems if you get air leaks the engine will end up running too lean and that can burn your pistons out inside your engine now it's all these things you got to do that you didn't used to do right you might think why on earth are they making turbocharged cars well they are because it's a cheaper way to get power the number one complaint about these toyota matrixes with a 1.8 liter engines is that they're dogs they're not fast enough blah 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 this thing cruises 85 miles an hour no problem on a highway i don't know what people are whining about they want to go faster i guess zips around it's no problems but some of these manufacturers coming out with 1.8 five 1.3 liter engines some of them only three cylinders they got no power and the only way americans are going to drive them especially if they're hooked up to an automatic transmission and 96 percent of americans drive automatic transmissions the only way they're going to have power is by sticking a turbo on them and guess what happens then they wear out faster and another tip is this they ram more air in putting more pressure inside the engine block right make sure you buy the right kind of gas now it's not like it was back in the day when I was young when all turbocharged cars said only run on premium gasoline because otherwise they get pre-ignition they do the rattle 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 if you accelerate it high from pre-ignition because they fired too early most modern turbos can run fine on just the regular octane pump gas the regular you don't need to buy the supreme but quite a few of them if you put the supreme in you'll find you got a lot better performance and also get higher gas much now that's up to you if you really want the extra power and you want the added protection of a higher octane gas so your engine doesn't ping you can use high test gas but realize this modern cars are so sophisticated they've got knock sensors all over the place some of them have a knock sensor for each single cylinder if they're four they got four knock sensors if they're six they got six knock sensors so if you do use regular gas to modern turbo it generally won't get pre-ignition it will just lose some power and of course the reason for a turbo in the first place is for more power so if you're getting less power because it retards the ignition when the knock sensor thinks it's going to be knocking it kind of defeats the purpose of a turbo in the first place which is one of the reasons amongst many that i'm not a fan of turbos myself now another tip for turbocharged car is to warm up your engine a little before you drive <laughs> on a normal car like this normally aspirated matrix it just has fuel injectors no turbo no gdi you don't really need to warm them up but here's the problem with a turbo a turbocharged car lubricating and cooling the turbocharger it takes longer for your oil to warm up than it does your cooling. If it's freezing cold outside, I'd wait five minutes. Heck, it's cold outside anyways. You wanna turn the heater on, try to warm it up, and it might take more than that for the heat to get to you, but warm it up first, and here's the real kicker. Don't get it and floor it and go screaming off down the road. Drive it conservatively until it warms up. Five, 10 minutes before you start really gunning it because you want that system to be lubricating correctly be at the correct operating temperature before you start driving like a loony in a regular car it really doesn't make all that much difference but in a turbocharged you really need to have it warm up somewhat now think race cars right what do they do in a race before the race they generally go around the track two or three times to warm everything up before they go full bore think of it that way you know i mean you're not going 200 miles an hour hopefully but you need to warm them up a little bit more than a normal car if you want it to last now even with all this i've never seen a gasoline turbocharged car last as long as the same car with a non-turbo engine in it right the only exception to this is big diesel rigs with turbos diesel engines are much stronger built than gasoline engines because they go by just pressure ignition so the engines have much more pressure inside when they ignite the diesel than a gasoline engine does when it ignites the gasoline using the spark plug so diesel engines are overbuilt i've seen many 18 wheelers have over a million miles on them yeah they'll be burning a little oil then but they're still going and they're all turbocharged right but not gasoline engines gasoline is kind of caustic right if you get 
oil mixed with gasoline in your engine. It's going to ruin the bearings and stuff. So unless you're going out and buying a turbocharged diesel car, everything that I just said about turbochargers is true. They won't last as long. They need more maintenance. They're much more expensive to fix. For example, Ford Motor Company even said, well, we expect our turbos to last 100,000 miles. whoop de do I expect my car to last three, four, five hundred thousand miles. Not have to buy thousands of dollars of equipment replacing turbos, especially let's say you got a Ford EcoBoost V6 with twin turbos. You got two turbos you gotta buy. And heaven forbid you buy a BMW with twin turbo. I had a customer with one, it was a six cylinder twin turbo, both turbos were going out. It was gonna be eight thousand bucks to replace them both because they were part of the manifold. You gotta buy the manifold assembly and the turbos together. You're talking about expenses when they age. And the last tip I'm gonna give you about making a turbocharged car running for as far as it can possibly go is don't race around like a lunatic all the time. You're gonna be tempted because it's got a turbo, kicks in and the engine revs up. Everything wears out faster. The engine, the transmission, the turbos, right? You got too much of a temptation to step on the gas and go faster, which in itself is kind of ironic because on paper, a turbocharged car gets better gas mileage than a non-turbocharged car. But that's on paper, testing on dynos and stuff, right? Paper isn't driving the car, humans are. And when humans have a turbo, they have a tendency to step on the gas more they feel the turbo kick in and zoom away they go so in the real world turbocharged cars almost always get worse gas mileage than the ratings that they give them because people are driving them not paper and people are driving them on real roads not on dynamometers I had a brand new four-cylinder turbo Lexus a couple years ago took it from Houston to San Antonio and back put it on eco mode cruise control and drove the highway speed mind you, the highway speed was 75 miles an hour but be that as it may that thing was rated a highway at like 35 miles a gallon I got like 24 that's cruise control on eco mode so don't believe the nonsense a better gas mods of turbos they don't in the real world. Turbos are for power, not for gas mileage. Only on a dyno are they gonna get better gas mileage than a conventional vehicle, because then they're just cruising along. So there you have it. Now, personally, I'd advise you not to buy a turbocharged gasoline American car, especially if it's an automatic transmission in the United States. Too many negatives, as far as I'm concerned. Get a car that's got a little bit bigger engine that's gonna last longer, especially one like a Toyota, 1.8 liters, they can run forever, right? Now you know what you're dealing with if you're gonna buy a turbocharged car, so hopefully you won't buy one. But if you do, at least now you know how to drive it and make it last as long as possible, considering the limitations of turbochargers. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.